just save and close, and then this would immediately transfer all of that inventory that was in that location to our new location. And next. So the next feature that Platinum Edition of Enterprise has, as far as the advanced features of inventory, are serial and lot numbers. So if we receive inventory and we need to keep track of what serial number is associated with that item or what lot that item was from, we can turn on this feature and we can track and have a little bit better flow and visibility of our inventory and what serial numbers are attached to items. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring up QuickBooks and again we'll go back to our edit, preferences, company preferences, advanced inventory settings. And we'll come to the next tab, which is serial and lot numbers. Now, whenever we get in here, again, it will be disabled. So we can simply check the box. And this is where we can choose if we want to track serial numbers or if we want to track lot numbers. Now, it's not going to let me switch it to lot numbers right now because we currently have serial numbers in the systems system. That's what that warning was. We can only track one or the other. We can't track both serial numbers and lot numbers. We can, dis we can tell it what we want to, dis want to track serial numbers on. So if we want to track serial numbers on sales transactions, i.e. invoices or sales receipts, purchase transactions, inventory adjustments, and build assemblies, keep in mind with build assemblies, maybe we have a part that has a serial number that's just a cog that makes up a bigger piece of the puzzle. We can track the, inv the original serial numbers of those items that went in to make up that bigger piece so we can keep track of all of that information. And then down below that we get some additional settings. If a serial number is blank on a transaction we can choose to warn us or don't warn us. There's no hard stop. I will say that the warn me feature if we do have that turned on we will be seeing a lot of reminders for blank serial numbers if we're seeing if we're accepting inventory that doesn't have serial numbers. So it's kind of up to you. Some people get a little bit annoyed with the amount of pop-ups and warnings that we get if we don't have a serial number on a transaction. So a lot of people will come in and switch this to don't warn me. Then if a serial number is a duplicate, of course, we'll be warned. And then if a serial number does not exist in inventory, we'll be warned as well. So if we close out of here and we'll just take a look at a bill. Let's say we're receiving inventory, and if we click on the Items tab, we can see that we get a new column off to the right for the serial number that we are receiving. So what we can do is if we add an item, and then if we add a quantity, then we need to say what site is this item going into. So we'll just put it in Warehouse 1 for now. If there was a customer that this item was for, we can add that here. We can add if this was billable to the customer or not. And then this is where we can add the serial number for this item. So if we wanted to, we could simply just type in the serial number. And then if we wanted to do another one, we can just hit the comma space and then we can type in another serial number. If we don't like this, or if we don't really like this me method, we can click the little drop down arrow right next to it, and we can do a quick view for serial numbers. Now what this will do is it'll show us all the serial numbers that were entered into this line item. So if we wanted to, we could simply add more serial numbers directly from this screen. It's a little bit easier, and it's a little bit quicker to enter the serial numbers this way than directly into this field. That way we can just come down, we can type in whatever we want. And then we can use, simply use the arrow key, go down, it'll go down to the next field, and then we can enter another serial number. And we can see here it keeps the running count of how many serial numbers we currently have entered into this bill. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this line for now, since we're only bringing in one. If we hit OK, it would save it, and then it would enter all the serial numbers that we entered here. It just separates them out with a comma. So next, we'll go ahead and close this. And then on the reverse side, if we were selling this inventory, we would go to Customers, Create Invoices, 
we would cho again choose our item. We'll go ahead and just add a vendor. We'll add our item. We'll say what item the site is being pulled from. And then again, this is the warning message that we would see. So since we're selling this item, I haven't entered the serial number yet. We get a little pop-up warning that says you can't have fewer serial numbers than items. We hit OK. We can come back and enter our quantity. We'll say we're selling two. And then if we come to our serial numbers, we can add multiple serial numbers at once, or we can type them in. But if we wanted to add them from the screen, I don't currently have any serial numbers from this warehouse. But if we were to change it to warehouse two, we can see at this site we have multiple serial, serial numbers. We could come through and we could assign whatever serial number we would like. Then we can hit add selected numbers and it will pull that serial number down into the serial number field. Now notice when we did that in the pop-up here, we switched it from inventory site one to inventory site two to see these list of serial numbers. When we did that, it flipped the site over here on the original column from warehouse one to warehouse two. So the system will automatically recognize where we're pulling the serial number from and will override whatever we originally put here. All right, so we'll go ahead and close out of this. We do not wish to record this transaction. And then we may have seen it earlier on the transfer of inventory. Whenever we transfer items here, we can go ahead and we can transfer the serial numbers from one site to another this way as well, just by putting in the serial number. So it will transfer the quantity, the item, and the serial number to the site that we want it to go to. So we'll go ahead and clear this out. We'll close this down. All right, and so let's take a quick look at some questions, see if anybody can take a look. Let's see, Mike, if possible, I would like to see the lot tracking feature. Um, the lot tracking feature I can't do right at this moment because I have serial numbers in this particular sample file and it won't let me switch it over, but if you'd like, I can get with you with another time and I can kind of walk you through it a little bit better. One of our product specialists could walk you through it. Like I said, I'm sorry, I just can't do it right in this. Whenever we have serial numbers in the system, we can't switch over to lot numbers, but it's something that we can definitely show you one-on-one. -on -one. What about transfers between bin locations? So transfers between bin locations will work the same way. We will just get an additional column for the bin number. Wouldn't adding a duplicate item for transferring inventory cause it to go into the negative, which QuickBooks isn't good for handling? Correct. So if, if it would sell you, if it would put you into the negative, you could have a duplicate item on the transfer of inventory, but it can cause you to go negative. It's something that you just want to keep an eye on, and we may want to use the feature that we saw earlier where we can block transactions that would cause us to go negative within specific sites. Can you use a barcode reader to link the bill acceptance with lot number? I'm not sure what we're, what that question means. Can I, can you use a barcode reader to link this bill acceptance with lot number? Maybe what we're talking about is if we use a, if we're in the lot number field and we scan the lot number with a barcode reader, it will add that to the, to the line transaction. In that case, yes, because the barcode scanning is very point and click as long as you're in the correct field. And then can multiple lot numbers be used? So if we try to use multiple, we can use multiple lot numbers. It will just assign everything that we had from the first out of inventory. So if we bring in one lot number and then if we had a new batch of something and that was a brand new lot number, we could then bring that in as well. Good questions.